In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. A warm welcome to St Mary's Basilica, the Cathedral Church of Sydney. For this live stream solemn mass of the 25th Sunday of Ordinary Time. As a church in Australia approaches the forthcoming plenary council, we listen especially intently to the Spirit speaking to the church in the Word of God. That our ears might be opened, we first repent of anything that might make us resistant to hearing that still, quiet voice, especially our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The godless say to themselves, let us lie in wait for the virtuous man, since he annoys us and opposes our way of life, reproaches us for our breaches of the law, and accuses us of playing false to our upbringing. Let us see if what he says is true. Let us observe what kind of end he himself will have. If the virtuous man is God's son, God will take his part and rescue him from the clutches of his enemies. Let us test him with cruelty and with torture and thus explore this gentleness of his and put his endurance to the proof. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, since he will be looked after we have his word for it. That this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord upholds my life. O God, save me. A reading from the letter of St. James. Wherever you find jealousy and ambition, you find disharmony and wicked things of every kind being done. Whereas the wisdom that comes down from above is essentially something pure. It also makes for peace and is kindly and considerate. It is full of compassion and shows itself by doing good nor is there any trace of partiality or hypocrisy in it. Peacemakers, when they work for peace, sow the seeds which will bear fruit in holiness. Where do these wars and battles between yourself first start? Isn't it precisely in the desires fighting inside your own selves? You want something and you haven't got it so you are prepared to kill. You have an ambition that you cannot satisfy, so you fight to get your way by force. Why? You don't have what you want is because you don't pray for it. When you do pray and don't get it, it is because you have not prayed properly. 
you have prayed for something to indulge your own desires. This is the word of the Lord. After leaving the mountain, Jesus and his disciples made their way through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know because he was instructing his disciples. He was telling them, the Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men. They will put him to death, and three days after he has been put to death, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he said and were afraid to ask him. They came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the road? They said nothing, because they had been arguing which of them was the greatest. So he sat down, called the twelve to him, and said, If anyone wants to be first, he must make himself last of all and servant of all. He then took a little child, set him in front of them, put his arms round him, and said to them, Anyone who welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus The 19th century Russian playwright Anton Chekhov was also an important contributor to the evolution of the short story. His principle, known as Chekhov's gun, forbade including elements that are not going to be paid off later in the story. If in the first act you have hung a pistol on the wall, he wrote, then in the following one, it should be fired. Otherwise, don't put it there. Given how little space there is in a short story, every detail must count. 
St. Mark, the short story writer of the New Testament, followed a similar rule. Dispensing with many of the healings and teachings reported by the other three evangelists and offering slimmed down versions even of the stories they tell in common. Peter's hometown of Capernaum, for instance, is mentioned 16 times in the Gospels. It's associated with family and forgiveness, fasting and worship, exorcisms and healings, with prophecy and cursing, with the crowd pursuing Jesus across the lake in boats, and with Jesus crossing the same lake unassisted. It's a busy gospel place. But Mark mentions it only three times. At the beginning of the gospel, when Jesus and his first four disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. And all were astounded at his teaching, for he taught as one having real authority. A few verses later, we're told, after some days he returned to Capernaum, which he had made his base, and there he healed many. We have the loaded gun, so to speak. Seven chapters later, Mark fires the gun. The team, which now includes 12 apostles and some women, are again on their way to Capernaum. But they are bickering. Not about the mystery of the incarnation by which their mate Jesus is somehow also son of God. Not about his death and resurrection, which he has just prophesied. No, rather than crucial questions of Christian doctrine, identity, and mission, their focus is on who is the greatest. As St. James observes, disharmony comes from jealousy, ambition, the desire always to get one's own way. But in Mark's Gospel, we know that Capernaum is the place of instruction, where Jesus taught with authority, and the place of homecoming and healing, where he was at ease with his relatives, friends, and clients. So he sits down to teach them another lesson. If you really want to be first, put yourself last. Among the Gentiles, the rulers lord it over them, but it must not be so among you. Whoever wishes to be great among you must be the servant, like the Son of Man, who came to serve, not to be served. The gun has fired. What were you arguing about together on the road? The Lord asks. In Greek, together on the road is sin odos, from which we get our word synod. In the lead up to the Fifth Plenary Council of Australia, there's been a lot of talk about the failures of some past church leaders and the exercise of power self-servingly, unaccountably, even harmfully, as the Royal Commission pointed out. We must find better ways of exercising authority together and well. 
but should we throw the ecclesial baby out with the bathwater? The Second Vatican Council confirmed the ancient faith that the church is the whole people of God and that the hierarchical structure that serves them is divinely instituted. Assuming secular accounts of power and aping secular models of governance, some would reduce the role of pastors to the ceremonial while leaving church governance to boards of lay experts. But such proposals are at odds with Catholic faith. As today's gospel highlights, however imperfect they may be, Christ's troop has the 12 at its heart. Ours is essentially an apostolic or Episcopal Church. What's more, structures are for mission, not vice versa. If we're not sure what our purpose is, how can a model of governance be judged fit for purpose? The task of a plenary council is to reflect upon the gifts and challenges of the day and prayerfully discern the best pastoral responses. If we're clear-sighted about the mission to welcome the Son and the One who sent Him, then needed structural changes will become apparent. Clearly, it's important that there be wide consultation of the laity, that many voices be heard, that co-responsibility be recognised and authority shared, that people's expertise be deployed, that sclerotic processes be fixed, and that we conceive of the church in collaborative, collegial, synodal terms, as Pope Francis asks. We are well down that road already. Lay women have always determined the course of the church, above all by having children, or not, and transmitting the faith to them, or not. But if the parish church and school are the principal meeting points for most people with the church, they usually encounter a priest as leader of the one and a laywoman as leader of the other. In this archdiocese, most departments and agencies are headed either by laymen or, more often, by laywomen. There are lay women and men on the formation team and council of the seminary, our curia and diocesan committees, as board members or leaders of our parish councils and ministries, schools and universities, hospitals and aged care, social services and chaplaincies, religious institutes, movements and PJPs. Others have established their own excellent ministries of their own initiative. In recent years, women have been national directors of Catholic education, health and social services, echoing the lead formerly given by women religious. Granted, much of this is underappreciated. But even as we make great strides in this area, we must be wary of creating new power elites and a new lay version of clericalism. No more squabbling over power, Jesus says. For Christians, 
Authority is about service, not control. Indeed, looking beyond Mark's Capernaum, we see in John's Gospel that it was at Capernaum that some of the disciples left Jesus because his teachings on the Eucharist were so hard. The other two Gospels also recalled that Jesus was exasperated by the lack of faith at Capernaum. Ultimately, we either assent to Christ's teachings and make our home in his church, or we stop walking together and take another course. To remain, we must embrace him with the enthusiasm of children. In 587 AD, with the connivance of the Byzantine Emperor, Archbishop John IV of Constantinople assumed the title Ecumenical Patriarch, or Father of the Civilised World. In response, Pope Gregory I called himself Servus Servorum Dei, Servant of the Servants of God. Great popes ever since have preferred this title above all, as Pope Francis clearly does. It suggests an inverted pyramid, with God and humanity at the top, so to speak, served by the people of God below them, with the people of God served by deacons and priests beneath them, the priests and people served in turn by bishops, archbishops and cardinals under them. And all of these servants of God served by the successor of Peter at the bottom of the hierarchy or lowrarchy. It's not the way the world sees things. But if we focus on our mission as servants of God, we can be confident by God's grace that we will have the right servant leaders going forward. For this we pray. And he told them the Son of Man would be handed over and suffer grievously, be put to death and rise on the third day. And so we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ our Lord predicted his saving death and resurrection. Through him, the suffering servant, let us bring our petitions to the Father of all mercies. For Pope Francis and for all the bishops of the Catholic Church, that God will uphold them for his own cause, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations marked with disharmony, that leaders will seek the wisdom that comes down from above and work for peace and unity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those devastated by the impact of the pandemic and the current lockdown, that they will be sustained by the hope that comes from God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose livelihoods are being threatened, that their needs will be provided for and their rights protected, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all children, including the little ones still in their mother's womb, that they will be given the welcome and care that God desires for them by willing them into existence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in Christ, that they may see their Redeemer and live, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask Our Lady, help of Christians and seat of wisdom, to intercede for us in Australia as we prepare for our plenary council and pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father of our Saviour, these prayers we bring before you. Express our faith in your Son, who humbled himself to die on the cross for us, and rose again to be our glorious Lord, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Receive with favour, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. He 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, Terry and Richard, my assistant bishops, the order of bishops or the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. My friends, yesterday I had the privilege of celebrating the wedding for two young people. It was a beautiful and happy occasion, but of course in this COVID time, with such severe restrictions, they couldn't have most of their family or friends with them. It really underlined for me not only the isolation and anxiety that many are feeling, but the many other hardships that come with COVID and with this time of restrictions. And so as we continue to pray for and do our best to keep each other safe, we're also conscious of the burdens of these times on each other and do our best to relieve those as well. Please continue to keep the forthcoming Plenary Council of Australia in your prayers for wisdom and fidelity for all the members of that council. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended.